All right, folks, it's panel time, and while we are out looking actively, we have a search team out for John Gizzi. Uh, we're joined by Hank Scheinkopf, president of Scheinkopf Communications, and uh, always good to see you, sir. You say, always good to see you, Steve. <laughs> Always good to see you, Steve. <laughs> Only kidding. You just right. ask me what to do and I'll do it. All right, let, let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, first before we uh, get into uh, Iran and other things, uh, there was a, a vote in the uh, House the uh, uh, House uh, uh, Committee on uh, Ways and Means voted along party right. lines to recommend uh, uh, the, the Justice Department consider criminal prosecution uh, against Lois Lerner. Um, we heard from uh, a member of that committee earlier in the show, Congressman right. Tim Griffin, a former U.S. attorney, who told us, quote, there is substantial evidence that uh, she had committed uh, criminal acts. So that being the case, but there's no way in heck that uh, Eric Holder will ever do that, will he? Well, not likely. I mean, look, the Justice Department did not suddenly become partisan. It's been that way probably since uh, before the Palmer raids of the 20s, so 1920s, which is quite a while ago. So that's not, no, not any news here. What is news is that uh, people would actively stand up and, and accuse an official of an administration of doing something criminal. Now, we last had this when? Um, what president was accused of criminal acts? Well, that was that, that if you're talking about President Nixon? No, Nixon. Uh, we impeached Clinton. We impeached Clinton. Uh, it goes on and on. Yeah, well, he, partisan, he, he committed partisan, perjury, yeah. The partisan, well, I'm not sure about that. The partisan nonsense continues. Well, you, so you think there's you think that there's no scandal at the at the IRS? You think you agree with Barack Obama? No, who told, I don't. Okay, then then what explain. I do agree what I do agree with is that the taking uh, using the Fifth Amendment privilege is guaranteed by the Constitution, and I do believe in grand juries, and I do believe in presentation of evidence before we convict someone in public. All right, That's well, fine. All right, well, how about the Justice Department looking into it? Uh, you know, they, you know there is, they no, have, there is you know, no question the Justice Department ought to investigate these charges. Right, no but, okay, now, you know, you, you talk about, well, I don't want to get into Bill Clinton didn't commit perjury, uh, but, uh, you know, he, he lied under oath. That's, that's perjury. It doesn't matter what it's about. And then, we were, then there was something else that you brought up that I also wanted to challenge you on, but I, I lost my train of thought you on that. You wanted to challenge me on the... Uh, no, Learner and and uh, you want to challenge me on the stealing of the Constitution and the base from the White House while Reagan was president in Iran Gate? Don't do that, okay? <laughs> don't. No, do I that. don't. I don't think. I don't think that's been. That's that's been bad. That's that's, that's that's been disproven. But that, but, but not disproven. They went. A lot of people went to jail. But but, but, but let's go on. Oh, I thought you're talking about. Uh, I thought you're talking about the supposed deal uh, with uh, with Reagan and the uh, the mullahs of Iran. I don't believe that. For no, well, that's seconds. what I was talking about when I said disproven. All right, so let, let, let's move on. Um, tomorrow, by the way, the. Um, the uh, House Oversight Committee is going to vote uh, to uh, hold uh, Lois Lerner in contempt. Right. Um, so we'll see. Oh, here's the thing. Fifth Amendment. Sure. You said she has a right to the Fifth Amendment. Absolutely. Well, Trey Gowdy, uh, also with a, a very uh, staunch legal background, um, said that once you, and, and by the way, Alan Dershowitz and others have agreed, once you, as she did, come up with an opening statement and say, I didn't do this, and blah, 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 and explain it, and then say, oh, by the way, I take the Fifth Amendment, you lose your right to take the Fifth D Amendment, which is what she did. Different issue. She ought to find better lawyers. All right, so then she then in this case, she might have blown her chance to, Possible. to, to keep the Fifth Amendment. Possible. All right, let, let's talk about Iran, because I, I know you, 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 when we were talking before uh, you came on, um, very interesting comment that you had about Iran. You said, look, Iran's, Iran's right back to what they were doing before there was any uh, cockamamie agreement. Cockamamie is my word. There's not, this is not about partisanship. This is about the security and protection of this nation. And it is patently idiotic to believe that the Iranians will not do exactly what they say. Hitler said exactly what he would do, and he did it. When crazy people talk in world politics, you have to listen. You have to listen carefully because they tend to do it. Look at the Balkans of 20 years ago. Look at what is going on today. Iran said it's going to destroy the state of Israel and blow it up. Do you think they're kidding? Iran said the next is the great Satan, that's us. Do you think they're kidding? And with the reduction of sanctions and the removal of them, they're going back to doing exactly what they were doing because they don't believe for 30 seconds that the Kerry-Obama team has the ability to stop them. That's why this is going on. So, what, what, so what's wrong with Obama then? What's he think? He's not thinking. He's not thinking. He actually believes that if you talk nicely to people who want to kill you, they will stop. The problem is when a man has a gun, you use a gun. And I'm not suggesting you go to war, but what I am suggesting is that you, you do the duty that you swore to do, which is to protect the citizens of this nation from external and internal threat. Right, He's not done that. Let's talk about uh, the Middle East uh, so-called peace talks, and of course uh, they're off on hold. Whatever you want to say, patently idiotic. Okay, well, okay. John Kerry, uh, before the Congress the other day, uh, blamed both sides equally, but but put a special blame, if you will, on on Israel. Israel's uh, Netanyahu's office is now blasting 
Uh, they have a name for what he said, uh, that, that, that speech that he gave before the Congress, where he took Israel to task. I mean, this is, uh, John Kerry has become the Palestinian spokesman. This is not about Palestinians or Israelis. This is about incompetence in the Obama administration, incompetence in Middle East policy, not understanding who they're dealing with and under what conditions. Yes, everybody should be asked to free 1,200 murderers so they can run around killing more people. That's patently idiotic. And if you read the Israeli press, which I did uh, last Friday, let's see, in Yudhya Dachanot, the most widely read newspaper in the country, the headline was Stirat Lechi. We had a slap in the face from the administration. They want to release 1,200 lunatics. That's far more than they wanted before. And by the way, afterwards, Abbas wants to then proclaim the, the Palestinian, the, Palestinian the, 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 the so-called Palestinian state at the UN and declare Jerusalem as the capital of such a state. What drugs are these guys on? Don't they understand what they're doing? And when you say what drugs are these guys on, you mean the, the U.S. administration? Yeah, what drugs are they on? They must be, they must be, there's something wrong because they don't get it. What everybody else sees, and to blame Israel, um, is extraordinary. Well, do you think there's a possibility that down the road, this administration with Kerry and Obama, or as you put it in that order, Obama and Kerry, uh, would recognize um, the, the Palestinian state at the UN as something they said they would never do? Look, after, after all that's happened in the last couple of years in foreign policy with this administration, anything is possible. Would they undermine Israel to that extent? They might as well have done it already. The good news is, Nothing. The Arabs are fighting each other all day long, so it's not likely they can gang up on Israel. The other good news, and the real reason for some of this is probably that Abbas, uh, the head of the uh, the, Palest the Palestinian uh, authority. authority, whatever it's called, um, um, he uh, felt pressure because Hamas, the, real, the true killers in Gaza, are suddenly becoming a much more militant this week to throw him off balance and don't want an agreement of any kind. So instead of Kerry blaming Israel, he ought to be blaming Abbas, but he's not going to do that because that's not popular. No, and Obama sat next to Abbas and called him a great man of peace. <laughs> I always, I tell you, people kill people are my favorites. If they can just kill more Jews, they'll be even more popular. Uh, I mean, I what are we, so. are we? Are we? This is a guy who kills people. That's his job. All right. He did it very well beforehand, and I'm sure when he's out of office, he'll go back to doing it. The Democrat strategy going forward between now and November appears to be yeah. uh, re resurrect Bush Cheney through this enhanced interrogation report number one or number two, and number two or number one uh, is this uh, equal pay, equal work, which the Obama White House has been found to pay women uh, 88 cents on the dollar, and their explanation is there's mitigating circumstances. Well, there's mitigating circumstances that make this a non-issue nationally, but that doesn't stop the president from demagoguing it. So are these two issues, trying to uh, talk about a war on women by Republicans and Bush Cheney as boogeyman, is that gonna save them in November? Um, more likely of the two, this, this is like a bad sale, you know, it's quite odd. Um, more likely the one that works better is war on women because that seems to have some resonance. Um, but Bush Cheney, had, you know, in American public life, they haven't been around for a good long time. So that's not gonna work. And if you have to, and all, everything in politics, having worked on a lot of campaigns, is always about balance. So what's worse, um, war on women or health insurance up 30% in small companies over the last three years? Which is a war on everybody. So you have to determine what's worse. Yeah, well, I, I, you, you, you preach it to the choir with that one. That's what I love about you, Democrat with sanity, lots of sanity. And uh, I hope uh, you have a very, uh, a very uh, nice uh, Passover holiday. Thank you. And, um, you know, I know you're going to be eating a lot of matzah. What would you say when we were... You uh, turn your bowels to sawdust. More I wish peace upon the world <laughs> that, that the Iranians don't get the bomb because the next stop will be a blue water fleet off the coast of New York. No, but don't worry because Barack Obama is going to give his Passover message soon and we're, the world will be saved. I feel much better already. Thank you very much. All right, Hank Scheinkopf, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the president of uh, Scheinkopf Communications here on the uh, Steve Malzberg Show. And, of course, John Gizzi, um, I think, what's that? Oh, he was out uh, looking at uh, a new line of hats. Okay, well, next time he comes on, he'll, he'll, we could expect a new hat uh, from Mr. Gizzy. All right, folks, when we come back, like I said, yesterday we had some technical problems with an interview we did with Mary Madeline. You're going to want to hear this, what she says about Dianne Feinstein. Watch on the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax Television. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malsberg Show. In 